Some other crop features that may be of interest to you are the ability to not delete the pixels that you've cropped. And you can see my little tip here, here, here on the left hand side. If you do not want to delete the pixels that are in the background that, that are grayed out, you can select the checkbox or you can unselect the checkbox that says delete the cropped pixels. And if you don't delete those cropped pixels, they'll be hidden in the background, you can't see them. But if you needed to, you could drag your image back and forth. And so let's, let's take a look at that in Photoshop. And so I've undone the, the crop that I just did, and I'm going to recrop it. But this time, when I crop the image, and I'm just going to leave the default settings, it remembers what I did before, right? It's 7 inches by 5 inches at 72 resolution. This time, I'm going to uncheck the option on the options bar that says delete the crop pixels. And so it's not going to delete them. And so if I accept the changes of the crop, and I crop, oh, let me actually crop the image so I'm cropping image out of it. And I crop the image. In theory, all the grayed out area back here, it disappeared the first time we did it. Actually, let's do that again so, so I can show that to you. And so if I crop it and I'm deleting the crop pixels, I don't have any more of this image. I'm going to switch to the first tool in my tools panel. It's the move tool. And if I click and drag, you can see that I only have the active image area that I cropped to. Go backwards a bunch of times. Now let's crop it again with the same settings and we'll make the smaller selection so all this area back here in theory is going to get deleted. But instead of deleting the crop pixels I'm going to uncheck that and again I'll crop the image. But this time the difference is that if I click and drag I can reveal the parts that are hidden back here. All right, So if I drag I still have the whole picture. And so I made the active area smaller. Maybe I made it the 7 inches by 5 inches that I needed for my project. But I could go back and say I don't like the positioning of that crop. Maybe I want to crop it to the left hand side or crop it more to the right hand side. And you can kind of change your mind. Now all the hidden data is still included in the file size. So you have to keep that in mind too. So your file size is going to be bigger than if you just cropped it and deleted those picture, pixels. But it is an option if you're not positive about what you want to do or you want the option to change your mind later on. Another feature that you may be interested in are the crop overlays. And so when you're cropping your picture, um, it would look like the image on the screen and the active area will be kept and the grayed out area will be deleted unless you choose not to delete it. But you can change that overlay or that active image area to have guides on it for you. The guides can be the rule of third guides, a grid guide, diagonal, triangle, golden ratio, or golden spiral guide. And this class doesn't specifically cover those things. Those are covered in Art 1120 design. Um, it helps you make aesthetic choices. But it can also help you, right? So if you need something to be straight and you want to make sure that when you crop an image it's straight, you can put the grid on. The grid is straight. And so the image that I see has like all these crooked lines. If I wanted to rotate the picture within the crop so that certain lines in the image, the vertical lines of the buildings or something like that, were straight, I could use the grid to help that. When you do the rule of thirds, in general, um, aesthetically um, speaking, if you put your subject area um, a third of the way in or two thirds of the way across your picture, it's more aesthetically pleasing. And so what you could do is you could use the grids and you could say that on the rule of thirds, I want my area of interest to line up at one of these four intersections. And if you do that, your image will be more aesthetically pleasing. The other overlays, I don't know how well you're going to see them on the, the video, but you can download the slideshow, put it in full presentation mode and you will be able to see it. Other methods of cropping include diagonal, and there's different angles and lines on here for you to use, um, triangles, the golden ratio, and the golden spiral. And so the more you know about these aesthetically pleasing ways to crop images, um, you could use these overlays to help make good choices. For now, I just want you to kind of play around with it and see that they exist, and maybe experiment with that rule of thirds, because to me that's the easiest one. Put your point of interest on one of these four intersections and preferably over across more than one of them. In Photoshop, you can turn them on or off. So let's undo those the cropping that we just did. Um, when you're cropping the image, you can turn them on or off on your options bar. There is, if we hover over here, you can see that there is a set the overlay options for the crop tool on your options bar when the crop tool is selected. If you push and hold, so I have it turned to auto show 
it's basically auto show and auto hide of that guide because I didn't want you to see it at first. I'm going to change it to always show and then you can see when you go to crop an image, zoom out here, that whatever the default overlay that you have on will be there. So I have the rule of thirds selected. If you hit that drop down you can change it to grid or a diagonal, golden spiral, etc. And then you can use those guides to help crop your image. I would like you to play around with that. Um, you don't have to master it at this point in time. Again, maybe try the rule of thirds, and when you're comfortable, you can move on to the next video, and we will continue with the lecture.